Good evening, Starth Ravage 07 coming at you today with another thrilling 30 generations update to a G1 Target Master released in uh, 1988. This is Thrilling 30's rendition of Scoop. And Scoop here comes with uh, two Target Masters. They can combine together and form one big blaster, or you can separate them. And the single blasters. These guys are pretty cool in themselves. They uh, they look really bulky for like the micro microns or whatever. These are actually target masters. They're not microns or even mini cons. But I mean, boom! There they are. There's uh, Cali burst and hole punch. And uh, the original original G1 rendition. This was Tracer, and that was still Cali burst. Is that right? No, or is hole punch and tracer, and then so nowadays it's hole punch and caliburst. Anyhow, they give you a 360 of them real quick, and they get the waffling that <laughs> it seemed to start with the generations line and carry on through. Uh, the heads are stagnant and don't move around. They got some arm articulation. The legs are pretty stagnant as well. It has some really good details and paint. I thought this is kind of where we were going when we got into the Thrilling 30. And uh, stuff started looking really, really promising. And it just kind of, it kind of fizzled out after Brainstorm and his, uh, gosh, I can't think of his little headmaster. But anyway, they didn't get bigger and more articulated. It just kind of got smaller and got just the same articulation throughout. These two are very different from like even Nightstick that uh, was with Cyclonus in the Thrill and th uh, 30. Anyway, uh, these guys are just really, really cool to have and they can peg in a normal, a numerous b bunch of spots. And what's look really cool is if you look at the G1 toy on the website, it has the same holes kind of where they could be pegged in as, and what have you, except for like right there. And the other thing I like is that if you have them back in there. Gun modes. You can stall them pretty easy. Scoop, just keep scooping. He is a scooper. A trooper scooper. Anyway, all puns and jokes. He can haul his own target masters around if they get too lazy. Alright, so let me get the scoop here and uh, show you off his vehicle mode. He rolls his all rolling things should. He has exceptional detail. I didn't notice that I had a different color until today. Uh, <laughs> it's really clever that for his transformation to vehicle mode, they hide his head like right there. Boom. <laughs> Hi. Anyway, really, really neat that it does that. It does roll super good. This is super articulated. It can move all up and down and around. I mean, shield him off from attacks, I guess. Uh, but mainly, predominantly. <laughs> Is I use him as a scoop for his target masters, and he just hauls those lazy bums everywhere. Uh, the back end has that more of that waffling that we have become accustomed to. Uh, these I just I think it's a really fun version of a scrapper kind of type bot. And uh, anyhow, I didn't didn't ever get the G1 one because that was 1988. It was in eighth grade, and I was either broke or playing with Transformers less altogether at that time. And uh, it wasn't really until Beast Wars came out nine years later or eight years later that I started back into the whole collecting phase. So let me get this uh, this gentleman into his robot mode, pose him with the Target Masters, and get some final thoughts. Thanks again for watching. Any of those that would like to subscribe to my channel right there, it helps out helps the channel grow. Also visit my Patreon, throw a couple donations in that way. Um, just trying to get this stuff off the ground to help support my family through these, these dark and hardened times and keep uh, having fun and staying lighthearted and positive and, and not ever, ever grow up as uh, a lot of other fellas will say. I mean, I'll tell you one, it's just overrated and two, this is a lot more fun, way more fun. All right, so let me get scooping in robot mode. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for helping out. One moment, please. And here's the trio in their robot modes together, looking all good and fine. It's neat how they got the colors to coordinate back into this exceptionally great mold here. We'll do a quick spin around the block. Let you see how everything works out. It 
it's really a nice take and on the G1 character, giving it the articulation it deserved. The G1 was just a block, like most of the other ones were in G1, and everything else is just so much better here. I mean, this is all due to transformation, but he's got like some amazing articulation for this guy. Um, he's got the arms, he's got the shoulders that can go up like this and like this. He has uh, his elbow, he has his elbow articulation. He's got swivel there, even though the tire's there, it doesn't fully hinder it. Uh, you can move this uh, company and junk in the back, and uh, you can do a numerous amount of, of ways of getting it to actually stay up if you want to. You can, you can have it like that. It's, it's really your preference, and it doesn't really, it, I thought it would make it really super back heavy, but he just stands there like really, really good. Um, he's got waist articulation, which is an absolute plus. He has the legs that can go up like this, this far back, and he can semi do the van down, depending on where his junk is at. So I mean, you can get him some really cool poses, and he can he can hold them. This is the other cool, cool part. I really do dig this guy a lot, a lot more than I thought I would for an Autobot that is based off of a Decepticon. <laughs> Not really based, but I mean. You know what I'm saying? This guy looks like he could be an Autobot scrapper, <laughs> and uh, has uh, there's some even in his wiki it was talking about some confusion. This chest and this chesty tail looks very heroic though, like Optimus Prime like, which I thought was a neat twist to throw that chest piece in there. The head itself has some light piping. Uh, I'm going to try to demonstrate that. I don't know if you can see it that good. But, uh, he's got the little bubble right there and it in the sunlight it looks really good his lights lights up his eyes really great all right so like that said and done let me get these guys into their gun mode and uh show it off him posing with the blasters and some final thoughts and that kind of thing one second please scoop can certainly double wield like a champ and the other cool thing like i've seen before if scoop needs a little extra punch he's tiger masters can get by in this way where Kelly Burst is on the bottom and uh, Hole Punch is on the top and it looks really really awesome and Scoop can wheel them back the other way where Hole Punch is on the bottom and Kelly Burst is on the top and like I said it looks good either which way and uh, he's just packing the heat ready to go into battle and take down the Decepticon threats that is about going to do it for my uh, 3 on 30 scoop review with uh, Kelly Burst and Hole Punch. I hope this was an enjoyable review. If you haven't got this guy, I'm going to try to add the link down in my description below so you can maybe get your very own copy if he impressed you enough. He is impressive in hand and is a lot of fun even still to this day. He was released in 2014. And uh, like I said, it was part of the 3 30 and uh, this modernized version over the G1, this is way more articulated. So with all that said and done, uh, please check him out, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you like to help the channel, if you like this video, all that stuff in the comments below. And uh, thanks again to all of who have subscribed. I really do appreciate it, guys. Y'all have an excellent week out, weekend out there until all are one. Thanks again.